Here's an example of a sequence gone wrong where the buyers wanted to do the inspection before they even wrote an offer. And I told them exactly how it was going to go. And since then, my crystal ball, it has, you know, I had to put my crystal ball in the shop, but it went exactly as I told them it would go. Call our click, 404 Eclipse. So here's what happens. I'm showing the house. They love it. They want to get an inspector in the house the next couple of days. This was on a Thursday. In a couple of days, they had an inspector in there. And I told them, hey, I said, hey, you're doing it wrong. If you like the property, let's check it out. You know, make sure it's not caving in or there's not some huge problem with it. But let's go ahead and if we like it, write an offer first. If you like it, write an offer. If you want to uh, put this house under contract, that's when you move to the next step. That's when you do the inspection. But I told him it would happen exactly as it did. I said, here's what's going. Here's how it's going to go. You're going to have an inspector. He's either going to be in the attic or in the crawl space in the next couple of days. And someone is going to come in and they're going to see the house, probably while your inspector's here. And they're going to tell their agent, I want it. Let's write it up. And it happened exactly like that. So the inspector, $450 later, is telling them everything about the house, but they don't even have a contract on it. Now, here's what happens. Those buyers, I was right. Any agent standing side by side with me would say, hey, Reggie is telling you the right way to do it. Don't do an, don't pay for an inspection now. There is an inspection period allowed for inside of the contract. Let's put it under contract first. And then, then let's get an inspector in there. So those are the kinds of things in the sequence. And that's not everything. But that is a huge piece where if you get that first step out of sequence, the other big expensive step is the financing contingency. People say, oh, I'll worry about my financing once I have a contract. No, no, no. Would you go to the store without your wallet or without your credit card? Would you go to buy something and not have with you what it takes to buy it? It's the same as you're going to look at houses and you're not, <laughs> you're not, you don't have the means to buy it or get a loan. Gigantic waste of time. That happens more frequently than, than the other part. The other piece is the appraisal contingency. So you got a property, you're, you're hoping it appraises for three fifty. You're hoping it happens that way, but guess what? You could have been way ahead of this. What is everything comparable to this house selling for? Is it selling for three fifty? dollars Then you'll probably be all right. Is it selling for two seventy five dollars or three hundred? dollars Yeah, you're about to blow the money on the, uh, on the appraisal. Your agent can tell you, hey, man, I know you like it. I like it, too. Uh, that three fifty dollars is a long shot. So let me see. Let me look it up. Let me find everything that has sold comparable to this house in the same school district, high school district. Let's make sure. Is it going to come in at three fifty? Let's do that first before we, before we put a contract on it, before we pay an inspector, before we get our financing in motion and start firing a paper cannon back and forth with you and the lender. Let's see: is the place worth three fifty? I hope it is. But if it's not, everybody's kind of doing a whole lot of stuff that it's not going to get either of us to the closing table.